I am Anthony Alf Elmore, President and Founder of the Proud Black Buddhist World Association. We at the Proud Black Buddhist World Association practice the Buddhist teachings as taught by the 13th century Japanese Buddhist sage Nichiren Shonen. It was Nichiren Shonen that teach us that the highest of the Buddha Shakyamuni's teachings was that of the Lotus Sutra and the only sutra that we should regard as supreme is the Lotus Sutra. Now, today we have an exciting Buddhist lecture for you today. Our lecture today is President Obama defines being black, a black Buddhist lecture by Anthony L. Elmore. See, please understand that Buddhism as taught into the world today runs antithetical or opposite to black people or African American causes. It is time for black people worldwide to stand up and fight and challenge the racism that is a part of the Buddhist religion. You see, Buddhism is a racist religion in that, in its history. See, in the history of Buddhism, in the first century AD, around 150 AD, Buddhism became separated by race, language and culture. See, the spirit of Buddhism changed and that's how Buddhism got to be a part of a racist religion. Let's go into it and take it. You see, one of the things that we must understand, and please hear me very clearly, it was over 1,000 years after the death of the Buddha that Buddhism reached China and it was 1400 years after the death of the Buddha, death of the Buddha that Buddhism reached Japan. Now today the masters of Buddhism or those who call themselves the master of Buddhism are Asians however Buddhism did not get to Asia or Japan until a thousand years after the death of the Buddha. In fact, Buddhism was in Africa 1,000 years before it ever even got to Japan. Now, when you look at Buddhism or you look at the structure of Buddhism, all we have who teach Buddhism are Asians and they call themselves the master of Buddhism, although Buddhism did not get to age until 1,000 years after the death of the Buddha. Now, this is what happened. See, in the first century AD, Buddhism became separated by race, culture, and language. Please understand that President Barack Obama Jr. explains that being black is not based only on genetics, but President Obama explains that being black is one's culture, one's language, and one's history. Being black for us in America is being able to find a patriotism in America in the midst of our struggle. You see, in the first century AD, the Buddhist religion extricated all black culture, history, and language from Buddhism. You see, what happened was, in the first century AD, there was a Kushan. Now, Kushan Dynasty, that is the land of Afghanistan, where the Kushans came from. Now, they were a part of Alexander the Great People, who set up generals who conquered Afghanistan and they were introduced to Buddhism. Well, a Kushan king in the first century AD, his name was Kanishka. King Kanishka conquered most of India and what he did was he introduced a new type of Buddhism 
in that he changed the image of the Buddha. Now, what I want you to take a look at here is the Gandhara images. Now, one of the images that's particularly striking is the image of Atlas. You know Atlas, the strong man who carries the world on his shoulder? Well, King Kanishka made an image of Atlas carrying the Buddha. You see, when you look at the images of the Buddha, you see the straight hair, you, uh, you, you don't see the blue eyes, you get the straight hair, and you got these images in Gunhara. Uh, what the King Kanishka did was he got together with a man who was a former Brahmin. His name was Ash Fagosha. Now, King Kanishka and Ash Fagosha got together and they changed the character of Buddhism. They created a new Buddhism that was separated by race, culture, and language. Now, as you see by the Gandhara images, King Kanishka, as a king, commissioned all of the images of the Buddha to be changed from black to white. Now, in addition to that, King Kanishka called what was the second fourth Buddhist council. See, the first Buddhist council was held in what was called Ceylon, which is present day Sri Lanka. Now, they had the fourth Buddhist council where all of the teachings of the Buddha was written down and the language that the teachings of the Buddha was written down was in Parskit or Pali. They had the largest, what exists is the largest writings of any kind of religion, 13 times larger than the Bible. It is called the Pali Canon and Buddhism was written in Pali. Now, what happened in the first century AD, there was a man by the name, he was a Brahmin, and his name was Panini. Panini took the language of Parskit and he converted the language of Parskit with a whole lot of rules and he used the Aura sound. For example, it was called Sutta, well he called it Sutra by putting the Aura sound into a lot of the words. Now, what Panini did, Panini invented a new language. It was an artificial language that was used only by the Brahmins. Sanskrit was never a language that was spoken in India, but it was a language of the Brahmins, where the language of the black people was Pali or Paskit. Now, what they did, or what you must understand, that in the Sanskrit language, the oldest archaeological evidence of Sanskrit is a carving called the Rudra Danan. See, the Rudra Danan is the oldest archaeological evidence of Sanskrit. Now, what they did was a group of people, of Brahmins, named Vedics, rewrote the history of Buddhism and they rewrote it in Sanskrit and when the Sanskrit came about they extricated all the black history, culture and language out of Sanskrit. They changed the Buddha from black to white and a new Buddhism that was founded by King Kanishka and Ashwagosha. This new Buddhism was called Mahayana Buddhism. You see Mahayana Buddhism is characterized by the language of the Brahmins or the Sanskrit language. Now, this language is an artificial language. Now, let's take this thing a bit further. Now, please understand that science teach us meaning archaeology, archaeology, anthropology, genetic science, and literary science teach us that the first people of India were black people and we have 
physical evidence of the black civilization. You see, we learn in school about the first early civilizations of man, like the Egyptian. Well, one of the early civilizations of man happened in India, and it was called the Indus Valley Civilization. Now, the Indus Valley Civilization were black people. There is no archaeological, anthropological, genetic science or any kind of evidence that there were ever black people in the Indus Valley. Now, from the Indus Valley civilization, ladies and gentlemen, this was called the Harappan civilization. It's called the Harappan. Now, the Harappan civilization, all the artifacts are that of black people. Now, what happened was, the Vedics went in and rewrote the history and, and they rewrote Sanskrit in the history by telling a lie, but there is no physical evidence of Sanskrit. Now, from the Harappan culture, there is a man who created an empire. This empire was called the Magadha Empire and it was started by C. Su Naga. Now, a few hundred years after the Magadha Empire was founded, we move into the time of the Buddha and we look at a king, his name was Bimbasara. Now Bimbasara was a contemporary of the Buddha Shakyamuni. See, during the time of the black kings of India, there was no such thing as the caste system because the caste system had, was, had not been invented. Genetic science teaches us, and they did a genetic study on the caste system, uh, one of the top universities, Hahabobam University in India, they did a study on it, and what they found was the caste system did not start until you got the white king Kanishka only 1900 years ago, but there was no such thing as the caste system during the time of the Buddha, nor was there a language called Sanskrit during the time of the Buddha. In fact, there is no record of Sanskrit. Now, one of the things that we can look into during the time of just about Alexander the Great, there was a Greek ambassador named Megathesthenes. Now, Megathesthenes wrote a writing called the Indica. Now, he talked about the people. He was a Greek and he was an ambassador during the time of the Miriam King. Now, by him being an ambassador, there was no such thing at the time of even Metheganes a Brahmin social order because the Brahmins were not in power at that time. Now, let us move to one way that you can study this. In regards to literary science, there is a free book that you can Google. Now, write this down. It's called The Journal of Asiatic Society of Great Britain and Ireland where you can read about the black history of India. This information regard to the black Buddha is written by top European scholars. Now, let us move to the consciousness of black Buddhists in America and around the world. You see, black Buddhists who, who are taught Buddhism by Asians are mandated to subordinate their self-consciousness, self-respect, dignity, self-pride, and accept a rewrite of Buddhist history. See, what you have in the Buddhist religion are black people who choose to live what they like. See, in Nichiren Buddhism, all you have to do is just listen. Just listen to black people and their willingness to live and associate with others who tell a lie, like the SGI, Nichiren Shoshu, 
and Nichiren Shu in the Nichiren sense, and those of Mahayana Buddhism. You see, black people, please, please understand. If you wish to measure the good character of another person, you will find that such people are honest people. Whether a person is black, white, Asian, or whatever, the best way to judge the character of a person is whether they tell a lie or tell the truth, or whether they are willing to live with a lie or live with the truth. You see, Nietzsche and Shonen clearly writes about this in the Gold Show. Now, the Gold Show are letters that Nietzsche and Shonen wrote to his disciples to teach them Buddhism. Now, there is a Gold Show called Reply to San Rinbo, and it reads, quote, No matter how honest and upright you may be, or how you may strive to be known as a worthy person in the secular or the religious world. If you associate with evil persons, then as a natural result, you will find that in two or three instances out of ten, you are following their teachings, and in the end, you too will become evil persons. Thus, the commentary says, quote, Though one may not be evil to begin with, if one associates with and is friendly with evil persons, one is bound in time to become an evil person oneself, and one's evil reputation will spread throughout the world. You see, many of us who are in the Nichiren sense of the SGI, Nichiren Shoshu, Nichiren Shu, or those of us who are practicing Buddhism, See, refusing to do good is just as bad as doing evil. See, when you settle for a miswrite of history and you don't do anything, you don't say anything, then you are just as bad. Like in Germany, when the persecution of the Jews came about, you had good people in Germany, but they didn't say anything, so they just as bad. Now, let us connect this back to our Buddhist lecture. President Obama defines being black a black Buddhist lecture. See, being a black person is not only associated with genetics. You see, we got some black people who could pass the white, but it is associated with a consciousness. Please be clear that black people or African Americans who are taught Buddhism by most Asians are taught how not to be black. You see, Buddhism that is taught by most Asian people extricate all black Buddhist history, culture, and language from the teachings. When you extricate a people's culture, language, and history, you strip a people of their ethnicity. In the case of black people, Asian Buddhist leaders teach black Buddhists how not to be black. When you look at black people who are in the SGI or Nichiren Shoshu or Nichiren Shu, these are people who do not have a strong black self-identity. You see, in our Nichiren, Nichiren Buddhist teachings, we learn about the Japanese word a shofuni, or the oneness of person and environment. See, the Buddhist principle of oneness and self and environment, a shofuni means that life, that is, show, and its environment, a, are inseparable, which is funi. Funi means two but not two. This means that although we perceive things around us as separate from us, there is a dimension of our lives that one with the universe. At the most fundamental level, life itself, there is no separation between ourselves and the environment. See, as long as you are with the SGI and Nichiren Shoshu and Nichiren Shu, you are going to be like them 
in that you are going to practice educating your black history, your culture, and your language. See, in common sense terms, African Americans are taught Buddhism from Asians. When you find African Americans in the country of Asians, you will find that most Asians not only educated black culture, history, and language from Buddhism, you will find that most Asians have educated black history from Asia. The fact is, all of the original Asians were black people, and Asians later on moved from black to white or to yellow. Now, what happened to black people who learned Buddhism from Asians is that black people lose their sense of self, and they lose their black identity. Now, let me provide you with a, some concrete examples. In 750 AD, this is the time in Japan when they set up the Buddhist platform in Japan. Now, please understand that the Buddhist platform in Japan was based on the Cosmic Buddha. That is, the, the Cosmic Buddha is the largest indoor Buddha statue in the world. This statue is made of bronze and gold and it was made in the ancient Japanese capital of Nara in a temple called Todoji. Now, what is special and unique about this temple that this temple is a part of UNESCO. Now, UNESCO is the United Nations it is the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization. You see, UNESCO's aim is to contribute to the building of peace, eradication of poverty, substantial development, and intercultural dialogue through education, the sciences, culture, communication, and information. Other priorities of the organization include attaining quality education for all, and lifelong learning, addressing emerging social and ethical challenges, fostering cultural diversity, a culture of peace, and building inclusive knowledge societies through information and communication. Now, even though UNESCO do all of this, the Japanese Buddhist sects do not deal with Tony G, don't teach you about Tony G, don't deal with the United Nations in that aspect. They simply teach you a Buddhism that extrapolated or extricated all of the black Buddhists from Buddhism. See, please understand, in the first century AD, the white Kushan King Kanishka and the former Brahmin Alpha Gosha created a new Buddhism that changed the spirit of Buddhism and that the new Buddhism was based on race, culture, and language, whereas they not only changed the Buddha from black to white, they changed the language of Buddhism from the black language of Pratskit to a new language invented in the AD by a Brahmin by the name of Panini called Sanskrit. Please note that the character of Sanskrit is to write out all black Buddhist history, or their goal was to write out anything positive about black people. See, this happened in the first century AD when King Kanishka organized the second fourth Buddhist council, whereas they established Mahayana Buddhism. Now, what happened in or about 150 AD, white races even in America attempt to do the same thing. You see, white races want to erase the legacy of President Obama. It was Donald J. Trump, a president like Jelly Trump, who led the birther movement that tried to delegitimize the presidency of Barack Obama Jr. Now, Donald J. Trump was elected via a white Backlash. When Donald J. Trump says 
make America great again, he means make America white again, whereas black people are put in subordinate roles in America. Now, let us move to the Buddhist religion in America. What you will find in America in regards to Buddhism is the fact that black leaders are in non-black roles in Buddhism. Please understand that being black is not necessarily genetic, but being black is your culture, your language, and your history. Now, this lecture is called President Obama defines being black, a black Buddhist lecture. I want you to watch a two minute and 17 second video of President Obama and explains what it means to be black. Let's watch this video and come back and put a period on this electric period on this lecture. President Barack Obama explains being black, a black Buddhist lecture. Let's watch the video. Race in America is in the eye of the beholder. We call Barack Obama our first African-American president because of the color of his skin. But in truth, he is of course biracial, born of an African father and a white mother from Kansas. The first line of your biography will almost certainly be not something you did, but who you are, right. the first African-American president. And yet, you're half white. You right. were raised by three white people, your mother right. and your two grandparents. Right. Uh, and an you, Indonesian, you can throw And an Indonesian. <laughs> are you comfortable with this characterization of you? I am, actually. And the concept of race in America is not just genetic. Otherwise, the one-drop rule wouldn't have made sense. It's, it's, it's cultural. It's uh, this notion of uh, a people uh, who look different than the mainstream, suffering terrible oppression, but somehow being able to make out of that a music and a language and a faith and uh, a patriotism. Being black meant only the knowledge of your own powerlessness and your own defeat. Barack Obama once felt quite differently about race. And the final irony should you refuse this defeat and lash out at your captors, they would have a name for that too. A name that could cage you just as good. Like paranoid. Or militant. Or violent. Or nigger. The earth shook under my feet, ready to crack open at any moment. I stopped, trying to steady myself, and knew for the first time that I was utterly alone. The poet William Wordsworth wrote, the child is the father of the man. So how to reconcile this troubled boy with the man who grew up to be president? A man named Barack Obama Jr. grew up not only to become the president of the United States of America, but Barack Obama Jr. defines to us what it means to be black. You see, we call ourselves the Proud Black Buddhist World Association. While we are Nitrin Buddhists, we are nothing like the Japanese Nitrin set. See, Nitrin Shoshu is characterized by an elitist bunch of Japanese priests who are like the Brahmins in India who created the caste system, whereas Nitin Shoshu make their high priests like the Brahmins a godlike character or one single person who singularly inherits the Buddhist law. Nitin Shoshu only have Japanese priests and their teachings clearly extricate all black history, culture, and language Buddhism. They teach about the Vedic culture and the false invasion arrogant theory like the other Japanese sect. See, 
In regards to the SGR and Nutrition Shoe, the ghost show, the true aspect of all phenomena reads, quote, the expedient means chapter in the first volume of the Lotus Sutra states, quote, the true aspect of all phenomena can only be understood and shared between Buddhas. This reality consists of the appearance, the nature, blah, 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 the consistent from beginning to the end. These are the ten aspects. See, in common sense terms, all you have to do is look at the phenomena. The top African American or black leaders in the SGI and Nitrin Shu are genetically black women. What makes these women unique is that you have black women with Japanese mothers, unlike President Obama, who defines himself as African American, or the first black president in America, what you have in these black women are individuals who do not define themselves as black. Let me take on Muke Shonen. Now, Muke Shonen came to, we first read about her, I think it's about 2010, 2009, something like that. She was featured on the CNN show, Black in America. Even though she was featured on the CNN show, Black in America, look at Muke Shonen. Muke Shonen emphasizes or have a total, almost a 100% proclivity to her Japanese heritage. And that way, when you look at the bald head, you look at the dress, you listen to her language, and you listen to her talk, she is a Japanese woman with a black father as opposed to being a black woman with a Japanese mother. You see... I got introduced to McKay Shonen through my friend Shaka Kalfani. Now, I had left Nitrin Shoshu and I wanted to examine Nitrin Shu. So, I went to meet to Shaka's house and we had agreed that we was going to call this our group Memphis Proud Black Buddhists. Now, when McKay Shonen heard about us trying to call this organization, Memphis Proud Black Buddhist, this woman raised holy hell and said, you can't name no organization, Memphis Proud Black Buddhist, what about white people? You see, in the Black Lives Movement, or things that were black, for example, when Dr. Martin Luther King marched, white people took up black causes. We can go in history and look up John Brown, a white man who fought against slavery. Good people, no matter if they're black or white or blue, brown or yellow, they believe in justice, and justice is actually supposed to be colorblind. Now, what Muke Shonen had an issue with, she had an issue with a black man standing up and being proud and indulging into his black culture, black history. See, she has a problem with blackness. Now, what I was told on Thanksgiving Day 2013, I wrote a letter to Muke Shonen and the Nitrin Shoe leaders. And I quoted the Gold Show. Winter always turns into spring. And there's a quote in the Gold Show about the sick child. And that when the Buddha Shakyamuni was about to die, he lamented that even though I'm about to die, I worry about King Ajahnasutra. Well, it was asked of him, the Buddha's mercy is equal to all. Why do you worry about King Ajahnasutra? And the Buddha replied that if a parent have what is eight children, they worry most about the sick child. And what I tried to present to Muke Shonen was we black people face the slavery. We face the worst inhumanity against humankind in the history of America. We face the worst. 
We've had to overcome the worst of suffering. However, the Buddha's mercy would be to look after the sick child and there should be no problem after black people looking after black people. We're not against white people, but we want to help the persons who need it the most. For example, in Memphis, Tennessee, just this year in 2016, we have a record amount of murders in Memphis. Just like in Chicago, they had over 700 murders, black people killing other black people. We need the Buddhist teachers more than anybody else, and there should be no problem to find a sense of culture, a sense of history. But what Muke Shonen did, she had Shaka to call me and cuss me out, told me I was no longer welcome to come to a Nitrin Shoe meeting. I even did a lecture right here, and me and I was trying to teach my son about Buddhism, and the Nitrin Shoe priest, Reverend Rudin, said, oh, I'm just shaking my head. Oh, you got this idea about black. Or I told my son that on the Gohanzan, you had the black gods on the Gohanzan, and this guy want to argue with me about the black, go black gods on the Gohanzan, said they're not black, it just means emotions. And he argued over the fact that the first shogun of Japan, Sakunaro Tomoharo, was a black man because black people were in Japan and because he don't have a history of Japanese people, he wanted to discredit me and I told the sucker all he got to do is Google and you yourself, all you got to do is Google the black shogun of Japan. But we're not going to get too much into that. I want to also deal with the top SGI leader and her name is Akemi Bailey Haney. Now, she actually is a friend of mine and that they and her family came to this very house 30 years ago. I know her father, I know her family, but what I have to say about Akemi Bailey Haney is that they don't look out for the best interests of black people even though they have faith in Buddhism that is very strong. Now, what, you, what I want you to do, I want you to listen to the words of Dr. Akemi Bailey Haney, and she was asked the question, how does she see herself? And what you will find is a direct opposite of President Obama. You see, President Obama's mother was a white woman from Kansas and his father was a black man from Kenya. However, President Obama has no problems or no issue defining himself as a black man or as an African American, whereas Dr. Akemi Bailey Haney, when she is asked how does she see herself, she sees herself as other. Let's listen to her own words in an interview that she did with the Chicago television station. Let's listen to her and we're going to come back and put a period on this lecture. You know, so, how, so how do you answer the questions that I hate? in this country, okay. which is to classify yourself, right? And mm -hmm. when you fill out all the demographic mm -hmm. forms, so what do you put? I always I put, always put other. Okay. And, or, I check African American, I check Asian, I check both. See, I, I'm a big advocate for, we should be able to check as much as we want. Because, <laughs> why I do that is because to check one and not the other totally negates my mother. Right, right. Or to check my mother totally negates my father. Right. I'm part Japanese and African American. That's my life. That's my. That's who I am. You know, it makes me who I am. You know, and so to cause a human being to not even, first of all, acknowledge that, you know, I think is not the way of creating a wonderful humanity. You heard the words of Doctor Ikemi Bailey Hani. Now. 
Buddhism is about the law of cause and effect. President Barack Obama Jr., who made the cause of defining himself as a black person and not other or both resulted to us having the first black president of the United States of America. You see, you can go to Halle Berry or we can go to history like Booker T. Washington or we can go to W.E.B. Du Bois or we can look at the black colleges and you will find that the black colleges were started because white people wanted their black children to get an education. They couldn't go to white schools, so they set up black schools. One example is right here in Tennessee, Fisk University, and many of the black colleges were started by whites who wanted to give their black kids an education. You see, biracial and being black is two different things. You see, many people who could call themselves biracial, but what if Booker T. Washington, or W.B. Du Bois, or even today, we look at Alicia Keys, or we go back and we look at the late Bart Marley, or we look at Jimi Hendrix, or we look at Malcolm X, or some of the greatest black heroes who have come to America, who were not just black heroes, but they were American heroes. What if these heroes did what a Dr. Kenley Bailey did and not call herself black? But she is a reflection of the mentality of those Buddhists who are trained by the SGI or those Buddhists who are trained by Asians. But anyway, I think we said enough. I am Anthony L. Elmore, the Black Buddhist Voice in America, with a Buddhist lecture. President Obama defines being black. That is us. Proud. Black boots. Thank you very much. I told the girl about my decision to join the Buddhist religion. She says, how can you leave the church? Don't you believe in God? I told her that it's not about God, it's about us. I don't like the tent, man. Scoop it on down to us. Trying to find the yellow big road, trying to find himself hard. I'm not like the tin man, skipping on down the Oz. Trying to find the yellow big road, trying to find himself hard. I'm not like the tin man, skipping on down the Oz. Trying to find the yellow big road, trying to find himself for God. I'm not like the tin man, skipping on down the Oz. Trying to find the yellow big road, trying to find himself for God. And those who say they know heaven and God, they are no more than a wizard of Oz. I'm not like the tent man, skipping on down the Oz. Trying to find the yellow brick road, trying to find himself hard. I'm not like the tent man, skipping on down the Oz. Trying to find the yellow brick road, trying to find himself hard. I'm not like the tent man, skipping on down the Oz. Trying to find the yellow brick road, trying to find himself for God. I'm not like the tent man, skipping on down the Oz. Trying to find the yellow brick road, trying to find himself for God. I'm not like, like the scarecrow, searching for a brain. I said, I'm the sutra, and for the wisdom that I gain. Unlike the lion, I encourage to be true and follow the Lord of Sutra that teaches that God is inside of you. Those who say they know heaven and God, they're no more than a wizard of Oz. I'm not like the tin man, skipping on down the Oz. Trying to find the yellow brick road, trying to find himself hard. I'm not like the tin man, skipping on down the Oz. Trying to find the yellow brick road, trying to find himself hard. I'm not like the tin man, skipping on down the Oz. Trying to find the yellow brick road, trying to find himself for God. I'm not like the tent man, skipping on down the Oz. Trying to find the yellow brick road, trying to find himself for God. I'm not like, like the scarecrow, searching for a brain. I said a little too short, and for the wisdom that I gain. 
I'm not like Dorothy who's trying to get back home. I practice the Lord of Sutra doctrine alone. I'm not like the tin man scooping on down the arms. Trying to find the yellow big road, trying to find himself hard. I'm not like the tin man scooping on down the arms. Trying to find the yellow big road, trying to find himself hard. I'm not like the tin man scooping on down the arms. Trying to find the yellow brick road, trying to find himself for God. I'm not like the tin man scooping on down the arms. Trying to find the yellow brick road, trying to find himself for God. I'm not like the scarecrow searching for a brain. I said a little too sure, and for the wisdom that I gain. I'm not like Dorothy who's trying to get back home. The only thing when the tin man I got, he talked me high to the road. What? I'm not like the tin man, scooping on down the arms. Trying to find the yellow big road, trying to find himself hard. I'm not like the tin man, scooping on down the arms. Trying to find the yellow big road, trying to find himself hard. I'm not like the tin man, scooping on down the arms. Trying to find the yellow brick road, trying to find himself for God. I'm not like the tin man, scooping on down the arms. Trying to find the yellow brick road, trying to find himself for God. I'm not like, like the scarecrow, searching for a brain. I said a little too sure, and for the wisdom that I gain. I'm not like Dorothy, who's trying to get back home. I practice the Lord of Sutra doctrine alone. Who questions the great and powerful arms? Yo, Ringo, 